Well, good morning and welcome to South Point Church. Is anyone fired up to be here this Sunday? Hey, I just want to say that we are so glad that, that you chose to be here today. We want to say hi to those of you online, wherever you might be watching from. Uh, we want to say good morning to those of you in the room that showed up in person. Um, if this happens to be your first Sunday, whether you're in the room or you're online, we are really glad that you showed up. We hope that this isn't your only visit. We hope to see you again next Sunday. If you're wondering who this crazy guy up here is, my name is Matt. I'm part of the team here at South Point. To, and uh, today we're going to talk about something that I I think might be important to everyone. And the reason I say it might be important to everyone is because it's something that all of us have in common, no matter where you're at in life and no matter actually what you believe. Matter of fact, all of us are going to deal with this problem. Matter of fact, I'm going to put this problem up on the screen for all of us to see, okay? Every day we are bombarded. I mean, just overrun. We are bombarded with, <coughs> excuse me, with tons of influences that can damage our lives and distort our identity. And here's what I discovered. This is true whether you're an all-in follower of Jesus. This this is true whether you have no faith. This is true whether you just have a different faith. I've also discovered this is true whether you are married or single. It's true whether you're rich or poor, you're young and old. Here's what I discovered is that all of us are bombarded with influences that can damage our lives and distort our identity. I mean, come on, come on, think about it. From the moment that you wake up, your phone will start dinging. Somebody say amen, right? You'll get something from TikTok that tells you how to live. You'll get something from YouTube or Facebook, all right, or Reddit. And then you wake up and then you go downstairs and you turn on the radio, right? And they're telling you all the things that you should believe and know. And then you get to work and somebody's got an opinion on, on this and that. And then you go home and you watch the news and they're going to tell you what to do. Everywhere you go, you and I are overrun with influences. I was thinking about how many times you and I get influenced every day. And I was thinking about it. TikTok, I have friends that take relationship advice from TikTok. Like, man, that sounds like a really bad idea, right? But how many of us are influenced from TikTok? I mean, think about it. How many of us, like, we, we get kind of YouTube is your deal, right? And you get financial advice from YouTube. You know, I, I don't think they're EF Hutton. You might want to check that out, right? Like, some of us, we listen to YouTube videos and we get influenced from them. Some of us, you know, and they, they show statistics that it's the older people, right? And, and that, that, the right term for that is mature. The mature people are on Facebook. And Facebook will tell you what you should morally believe and how you should politically vote, right? And then when you get home, you'll, you'll turn on the news or listen to news on your radio, right? And they'll tell you what to worry about. Here's what you should worry about today. They don't tell you all the good things. They just tell you what you should worry about, right? And then here's what I discovered. Oh, this is going to be really good. Then you go to work and your friends at work will always have opinions as what the problem of the world is. They'll tell you what all the problems of the world are. And if you have really good friends, they'll tell you the solutions to your problems. And then you'll talk to your family and they'll just tell you, you are the problem. And here's what I discovered from the moment that we wake up till we fall asleep. We are overrun with influences that can damage our lives and distort our identity. Because listen, you didn't need to come to church to read the Bible. You already know this, that not every influence that we get is a good influence. True story. Uh, of growing up. And, and I always kind of tell people this when I tell stories. Like we do here at South Point Church, we do what we call Big People Church. Somebody smile and say amen. Big People Church means we talk about real everyday lives in here, right? Okay, so just smile, right? Okay. And then, so then we do Little People Church where we don't just babysit. We tell little kids that there's a God who made them, a God who loves them, right? And there's a God who wants to be their forever friend. And so if you bring your little kids in here, I'm going to say words that they're going to ask you questions about on the way home. And so like, I just want to just, that's the warning. Like, like when you bring them in here. So you're more than welcome to. I just, you know, as I tell true stories about life, right? So influences, right? So when I was about 10 years old, right? Uh, 10 years old, my mom had committed suicide when I, when I was nine. Um, and so I had to go live with my biological dad and my, my stepmom. And, and due to some decisions that I made and due to some mental health issues, uh, there was a season in my life as a, as a 10-year-old, I wasn't allowed uh, to be alone. And so that both my biological dad and my stepmom, they both worked. And so uh, they would take me to certain family members so that they could watch me throughout the week. And I had a couple of family members, one on my, my stepmother's side and one on my biological dad's side. They were my heroes. You ever, you ever have that fa favorite family person? You, you, know, you know who they are. You know, people say there's no favorites. They're lying. Right? And so I, I had a favorite person um, on, on my, on my stepmom's side, a favorite person, right? So I would hang out with them, and they were my heroes. I looked up to them. But as a 10-year-old kid hanging out with one of them, I discovered very easily their pornography stash. 
But then, and that was the guy, and then on the other side of the family, I went and hung out with this person who was a female who I saw as a hero, and I discovered whore pornography stash. And as a 10-year-old kid, the heroes who were my family members had an influence on what I thought about sex, men, women, what it meant to use and abuse and to do those things. And what I discovered is that influence damaged me for decades on how I saw myself and how I saw others. And it ended up creating harm in my life and the life of other people that matter deeply to God. And here's, like, listen, I'm going to tell you something that, like, you, you, you already know. Like, listen, you already get this. And it leads us to a truth that we've all experienced, and it's this right here, right? Unchecked influences. Unchecked influences will derail our dream for good. Because even though we're bombarded every day from influences, not all of them have what is best for us. Some of the things that influence us will actually damage our lives and distort our enemy. They'll actually do the opposite of what we want. And so unchecked influences will derail our dream for good. And here's why it's so important. We need to answer the question. How do you, how do I, how do we determine the influences that are good or the influences that are toxic? How, how do we actually determine that? And here's why this is so important. Because you know this and I know this. When we have a lot of regret in our life, the quality of our life is not what we wish it would be. And the less regret we have, the better the life that we have. Now, we're going to come back and answer that question. And, and this message is going to make sense all by itself. But as Pastor Kyle told you in announcements, we're, we're in the last week of, of a series uh, called Crazy, dealing with the chaos on the inside, dealing with the chaos on the outside. And listen, here's, here's been the whole idea behind the series is, is that crazy is unavoidable. Turn to your neighbor and say amen, right? Like crazy is unavoidable. Just nod your head. Like you can't avoid it. Crazy's out there and crazy's in here, right? And I don't know why Pi Pastor Kyle said you all are crazy. Like we're all cray crazy. The great news is, is that all of us are equal at the foot of the cross. We all got some crazy. And here's been the big idea that we've said every week, and it's this right here. We're going to put it up on the screen. And all of us, all of us have fallen for crazy. All of us have done something that we thought was going to turn out so such a good opportunity. It feels so right. It can't be wrong. We all of us have fallen for crazy because it disguises itself with pleasure, but with no price tag. And that's simply what regret is, isn't it? Regret is we got exactly what we wanted, but at a price we never wanted to pay. And each week through the series, we've admitted something that all of us are going to face. All of us are going to face these things we're going to put up on the screen. All of us has crazy thoughts, right? Yeah, go, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. All of us have crazy feelings. Some of you have had those crazy feelings as you're leaving the parking lot. Please be nice to your neighbors. We've all had crazy opportunities, and we all have crazy influences. And the reason we all have crazy influences, listen, you know this and I know this, crazy always wants company. Smile. Have you ever noticed crazy always wants company? And so, like, listen, you all have crazy influences. Influences. And the good news is each week is we discovered that God knew that you, that me, that we would struggle with this. And he gave us Jesus that would be an anchor against the storm of crazy so that no one has to shipwreck their lives. Now, if you missed week one or week three or whatever, if you missed any of them, you can go onto our website or our YouTube channel. You can subscribe and you can watch on demand and catch up there. Now, back to our regular scheduled broadcast. Right? Crazy influences. And here's the question that we're all left with right here. Put on the screen. How do we know which influences are good and which ones are toxic? Because if we can't answer this question and we don't figure it out, then we end up with regret that none of us wants. And my guess is, is that whether you're online in the room, no one wants more regret. So we need to be able to answer this question. Now, now, listen, as we're admitting something that's hard, as we're admitting something that's honest, that, that's crazy everywhere, right? There is some encouraging news. Here's the encouraging news. The answer to this isn't really hard to find. It's actually very simple to find. Not only is the answer to this simple to find, it's also easy to do. We, even kids can do it. Like, it's so simple and so easy. It's awesome, right? And part of the encouraging news is that crazy influence happens to us all. It's happened since the beginning of time on every continent and every generation and every culture that answering this question is something that all of us need. A matter of fact, did you know that Jesus 
had to deal with crazy influences. Matter of fact, we're going to take a look at an example of Jesus having to deal with crazy influences. You know, the He Gets Us campaign is absolutely 100% correct, that Jesus dealt with the crazy that you and I dealt with. Matter of fact, we have an eyewitness account of Jesus trying to get influenced by, by Cray Cray, right? And we're, we're going to pick it up. We're going to pick it up in the eyewitness account of the Gospel of Matthew, right? We're going to pick it up. Eyewitness account of the Gospel of Matthew says, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to the disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and he would suffer many things at the hands of the chief priests and the elders and the teachers of the law, that he must be killed and on the third day raised from life. Now, listen, I just want you to know something. I, I didn't grow up in church. Matter of fact, the first time I started reading about Jesus was, was when I was in juvie in jail, and they would put a New Testament in each of the cells. And there was this guy named Jesus, and it says he walked towards Jerusalem while everyone else was feared, and they were amazed and discouraged. See, what I love about Jesus is he told them in advance exactly what was going to happen. He said, I'm going to go there. They're going to try to kill me, but don't worry. Three days later, the tomb will be empty. Now, here's the thing. We're all going, amen, but none of the disciples thought that. Because there was nobody at the tomb on Easter morning going, 10, 9. They were all hiding. Because no one had ever come back to life again. But I love about Jesus is Jesus, listen, I need you to understand something. God has told me what my mission is. My mission is to lead a perfect life and pay a debt that you cannot pay. Not to fix the world from the outside in, but fix the world from the inside out to fix your heart. For you to know that there's a God who loves you and a God who made you and a God who's going to be your forever friend. Sounds like great news, but don't worry, cray cray is coming. So Jesus has got a crew around him. He's got like about 120 people that are following him, right? And then out of the 120, he's got these 12 that are like his posse. And out of his 12 of his posse, he's got his three core pals, Peter, James, and John, right? So Jesus tells this whole crew, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to go there. They're going to kill me. But don't worry. On the third day, I'm going to rise from the dead. And here comes Peter. Cray Cray Peter comes out. Let's, let's check out what Peter does. Look, look this, I love this. Look what he does. Peter, like, this is going to be mind boggling. Look what he does. Next verse, he goes to this. He says this. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. So let me get this right. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus spoke to the storms and the winds and the waves and calmed them. He opened the eyes of the blind. He caused the lame to walk. And he tells Peter that I'm God's only son. Don't worry. I'm going to conquer hell and death. And Peter thinks it's a good idea to grab Jesus and go, hey, uh, you know, Jesus, can, 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 I, can I talk to you for a quick second? Just, just me and you, just pow to pow. So Jesus entertains him. Jesus walks over. And so Peter puts his arm around Jesus and says, Jesus, you know that whole thing you just said? How about no? Peter took him aside and began to rebuke the one who created the universe. He said, God forbid it, Lord. He said, that must never happen to you. You want to know why? It's because Peter had a different picture of what Jesus the Savior would look like. You see, here's the reality is that Jesus came as the true king. Whether you have faith or different faith, we all know that the world's busted and broken. We know that the world needs a savior. And there's this one, Jesus. And he said, I came to save the world. But I didn't come to save the world through power or through force or through politics. Somebody should say amen. He said, I'm going to go die on the cross as the suffering savior. But don't worry, I'm going to conquer hell and death so that we can become different people from the inside out and your debt will be paid for. But the problem is, is Peter didn't want a savior like that. Peter wanted a savior who would protect and provide. And you know what? Many of us in the church have the wrong picture of Jesus. We want a Jesus who you get a car, you get a car, and you get a car. But that's not why Jesus came. Jesus came as the suffering savior and calls those that follow him to give their lives for others. So here's Peter. He just gives, he's trying, to, he's trying to give some crazy influence to Jesus. Jesus tells him, this is God's plan for me. And Peter comes along and says, no, 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 no. That's a bad plan. God, I got a better idea. Can you, that is, man, that's some courage. <laughs> right? And then look what Jesus does. I love, you know, this is what I love about Jesus. Jesus doesn't tell people what they want to hear so people will like him. Jesus tells people that he loves exactly what they need to hear. So here, here's Jesus' response. So the next verse, it says, here's what he said. Jesus turned to Peter and said, get away from me, Satan. <laughs> now, just, just so we're all clear, Peter wasn't Satan, okay? But he said, Peter, you're acting like Satan. You have the mind of Satan. You are a dangerous trap 
to me, and I just want to stop and ask a question. Is TikTok, Instagram, Reddit, Fox, CNN, your in-laws, are they a dangerous trap? Are they telling you something different than what God would have for you to do? You are seeing things from a merely a human point of view, not from God's. And in this interaction where Jesus knows exactly what he's supposed to do and crazy tries to influence him, you and I see the solution that God's trying to teach you and I this morning. Matter of fact, it's just so simple. I'm going to put it up on the screen here. Here's what Jesus teaches. Jesus lets his identity Who he is. Jesus lets his identity as God's beloved son drive his decisions, not Peter's influence. Jesus knew exactly who he was. The question isn't, what is it that I'm supposed to do? Who am I supposed to become? See, we often get it wrong. It's not about what we do. It's about asking the question, who are we becoming? And he knew as God's beloved son that his identity was that he could trust his father. There might be some pain. It might feel painful, look painful, and actually be painful, but he trusted his heavenly father and he believed that he was the beloved son. So he made his decisions based on that, not on Peter's influence. And thank you, because the historical fact is that the tomb of Jesus is empty and the same power that rose Christ from the dead can live on the inside and change us. Matter of fact, There was a famous disciple of Jesus. His name's Paul. Now, Paul wasn't an original homie, right? He wasn't an original disciple. He he actually encountered a risen Jesus, and, and, and he started, like, creating Jesus communities. And he created this Jesus community in a Roman city called Ephesus. Now, it was a port city, and it was a group of people a lot like South Point. They were young. They were old. They were rich. They were poor. You know, different ethnicities. There were people who'd grown up in church, people who had never gone to church. There were people who'd grown up with different things, but they had all surrendered to Jesus. And they were dealing with the crazy that you and I, there was a Roman emperor. The city had all kinds of foreign gods. And it was crazy. It was like Las Vegas before Las Vegas was cool, right? And so they had all this crazy. And they're like, well, what do we do? Like, what are these Jesus followers? We got all this crazy. And here, here's what he here's what write him after seeing what Jesus did. Here's what he says. He says, I pray that out of his glorious riches that he may strengthen you. That when crazy comes that you have a fortitude and you have a resolve. He says, I pray through his glorious riches that he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit. You see, when we surrender to Jesus, God's presence comes and lives on the inside of us. In your inner being, Because you know this, what happens on the outside always starts on the, you know it and I know it. And so he's saying, listen, here's my prayer. It's that you would be strengthened. Well, how would you be strengthened? That God's presence would live on the inside of you so that as you make decisions from the inside out, you will have God's presence that will remind you of who you're meant to be. Well, what does that actually look like? Well, the apostle Paul doesn't stop there. He tells us a verse or two later. He says this, he says, you may have power. We need power to be able to make the right decision. We need to be able to discern. He says, may have power together with the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high and deep is the power. Oh, no, that's wrong. That you might grasp how wide and long and deep and is the kind of the riches. No, what does the word say? Love. He says that you might grasp how deep and wide and long God's love is for you. He's trying to remind them that you are a beloved daughter, that you are a beloved son of the Most High. He's trying to remind them the power you need to deal with crazy comes from your identity, that you are deeply loved. Listen, anyone that would die for you at South Point, we say, is for you. If he would die for you, you can trust him. And so what does this actually look like? As we go, I mean, we wake up, tomorrow we're going to wake up, and TikTok's still going to be there. Some of us should look at it a little bit less. When it tells you it's time for you to go to bed, you've probably been on it too long. You know, I don't care what Fox or CNN says. I don't care what ESPN says, Facebook or YouTube. How do we actually deal with this? Well, I believe God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, His presence wants to remind us of three things every day. If we would just make time to hear his small, still voice every morning to hear these three things that are so important, because crazy will try to influence you. The same way it influenced me my whole life, the same way it's influencing you your whole life. And the real question is, is it leading to life or is it leading to death? And here's the three things I believe God's presence will tell us every day if we're willing to stop 
and take a listen. And, and we're going to put those three things up because I think these are so important. And I'm just going to cover them briefly. And every time a pastor says briefly, it's not as brief as you'd hope. <laughs> First, his presence tells us that we are beloved because here's what I discovered. Shame always attacks us. You know what shame is? Is that I don't matter. Shame says, I don't matter. And if I don't matter, then what I do doesn't matter. We have a purpose comparison. Well, I'm not them. They're better, smarter, faster, better, like whatever. They have more money. They have all the things, right? That we have a purpose comparison. Comparison's a game with no winners. Somebody should say amen. And we are secure. There's this idea of scarcity that if I don't get mine, I'll miss out. But I want to start with that we are beloved. Listen, if you only hear one thing today, this is where I'd ask you if you're online to lean in or in the room is that there's a God who can't love you any more than they already do. God can't give any more than he's already given. Do, do you understand that? God gave, he broke heaven's bank. He gave his one and only son who said, Father, forgive them as they nailed him to the cross. God can't love you and I any more than he already does. Did you know there's no sin that you did 10 years ago or you did last night that the blood of Jesus can't forgive? The good news is we're not made right with God because we showed up today or we put something in the offering or we walked a little old lady across the street. We are made right because of what Jesus did on the cross and he paid that price so that you and I could be adopted as sons and daughters. And I don't know who told you that you were unlovable, but there's a God in heaven who gave everything for you to know that you matter deeply to him. And here's what I know to be true and you know to be true. When we feel like we don't matter, then it doesn't matter. True story, I was, I was in my teens and I was hanging out. This was before I was a Jesus follower. And I was hanging out with a bunch of crazy people like me. And, and we had gotten a hold of, don't ask me how, in my teenage years, we got a hold of grain alcohol, Everclear. And for those of you that don't drink, it's 100% proof. It's 100 proof alcohol. It's like drinking jet fuel. And typically, the reason that they make Everclear is for poor people to put in, in a big bowl of punch so that they get their liquor lasts longer. It's, not, not, it's an economic thing, right? And so anyway, I don't know how me and my teen friends got this, but you typically would chase it with something. We didn't have anything. All we chased it was with water. And so we were chasing Everclear grain alcohol with water. Yeah, for those of you that drink, are like vomiting a little bit in your mouth. Yes, you should. Right? And so we kept challenging each other like to drink some more. And here's what I discovered because I believe I didn't count. It didn't matter what I did. And I literally almost died that night. I had alcohol poisoning. And the fact that I made it through is a miracle of God. And I wonder how many of us have bought the influences that said, you don't count. Maybe it was a pastor. Maybe it was a mom or a dad, an auntie, an uncle, a coach, a teacher. Maybe you bought into the lie that you're a cosmic accident and that what you do in your life doesn't matter. But I want you to know in the pages of history that Jesus showed up and he paid the ultimate price that you would know that you were destined to be adopted into the family of God. Now, God will never force anyone to be part of the family, but you are beloved. There's nothing more that God can do at some point, love has to be a choice or it isn't love. The second thing the Holy Spirit reminds us of every day if we make space is that we have purpose. Because if you and I are really honest, do you know the lie of our world right now is? Is that your fulfillment is tied to what you have and who you're with. Can I get an amen? Right? I mean, did you know that the average new car payment in America is over $700? I mean... Our value or our, our, our thing of being fulfilled is tied to what we have. Do you notice that it's always pretty people that sell things? I mean, have you ever noticed? Like, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying, have you ever noticed that advertisers or people they put, it's always about what you have and who you're with and that you won't be fulfilled unless you have these things or unless you're with the right person. And I got some news for all the single people in the house. There is, and even some of you married people, there's nobody out there to complete you because you weren't made to be completed by somebody else. You were made to be completed by your heavenly father. 
And here's something else. Like, listen, come on, listen. Here, here's something. Like, you, you already get this. Listen, you can't consume your way to fulfillment. The reason we need the Holy Spirit to tell us that we have a purpose, that you are unique. There's only one of you. God chose to make you just the way you are. God has a plan for your life, and you are made. Listen, I don't know why Christ followers when they leave here aren't fired up, because we know how the story ends. We are freely forgiven. Eternity is given. Our inheritance is secure. We get to go around and go, listen, I can bring up there everywhere I go. You mean I can bring it to the gym? Yep. You can bring it to the bar? Yep. You can bring it to the bowling alley? Yep. You can bring it when you're walking your dogs. You can bring it on TikTok. You you can bring it everywhere you go. You have a purpose. Isn't it amazing that Jesus didn't go to the palace of the wealthy to get his disciples? Jesus didn't go to the army garrisons for strength, and Jesus didn't go to the religious educated. Jesus went to the everyday people. And here's the reality. No matter why you're here, where you've been, or what's been done, God has a plan to use you because you have purpose. And for some of you online or in the room, you're going, well, you don't know what I did. And you're right, I don't. You don't know what's happened to me. And you're right, I don't. And you might be going, you don't know where I'm at in your life. And you're right, I don't. Here's what I know. The same power that rose Christ from the dead can turn your life around. And listen, hold on. You want to know how I know that? Because I was a cray-cray just out of juvie, addicted, busted, and broken with influences that warped and bent me. And if God can, I think God uses crazy people like me just to tell awesome people like you, if I can do that with that knucklehead, imagine what I could do with you. (laughs) Why are you laughing at me? (laughs) <laughs> We're good. We have purpose. Our lives are fulfilled. True story. I, 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 we have a couple cars in our family. I got three daughters, right? And so we have a beater car. That's what we call it. We have, we have a car. It's a beater car. It's 23 years old. It's got over 200,000 miles on it, right? And it's been hit and run into in every area. Like, it's got a dent everywhere. There isn't a place that doesn't have a dent. And so I was hanging out with one of my friends. He's a law enforcement officer. And I showed up, and he's like, hey, man, you don't need to drive that car. And I go, what are you talking about? Those, those, we profile those kind of cars. You're going to get pulled over. I go, great. I have nothing to hide. About a week later, someone said, aren't you embarrassed to be driving in that car? You, your purpose is what you have and who you're with. And you go, you think I care what kind of car I drive? My life is not the sum of the things that I have or the people I'm with. My purpose is tied to the creator who made me. And he doesn't use me because I get it right or I'm talented. He just uses me because he is good. And the Holy Spirit will let us know that you are secure. Because, you know, see, I, this is just true. Like, we just, this is one of the greatest advertising lies that you and I buy into. It is unjust to miss out. If you miss out, that's unfair. You shouldn't miss out on a fun time or pleasure or this or that. If you miss out, that's unjust. And because missing out is unjust, it's okay to get that thing that you want immorally. Basically, what it's saying is it's a doggy dog eat world, and you need to get yours. And if you hurt some getting yours, that's okay because it's unfair that we miss out. But here's what you and I know. That just because you get pleasure or you get it doesn't mean it's good for you. Come on. Just because it feels good and looks good doesn't mean it's good for us. And here's here's what's amazing about our security. is that Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But don't worry. I've overcome the world. And if you want a reminder, the tomb is still empty. You see, here's what I don't get. We squabble and complain about, does my internet work? Do I have the right kind of car? Am I with, you know, all these things. Am I getting mine? When in the reality is, is it's like, it's all going to go away. We have an inheritance that will never, ever rot or destroy. God said that he will come back and he will right every wrong. He will wipe away every tear and we will have an inheritance. We will get the world as it was meant to be. I'm fired up. And I didn't earn it. I didn't work for it. It's given solely by what Jesus did. So if I don't get mine on this side, that is okay. Jesus didn't get what he deserved, and he conquered hell and death. I can trust my God that if it doesn't work out my way, it'll still work out. That life will still happen. True story. Years ago, 
I had a really good friend, and a good friend is a good dude, man. Like, he grew up good. He was a good dude. He, he was in a profession that required you to be, like, a good dude. And, and he was going through somewhat of a difficult time. And, and as you go through this difficult time, we'd hang out every once in a while. And every time we hung out, he's like, man, let's let loose. That was his phrase. Let's let loose. Let's let loose, man. Like, let's have a good time. And he would say, let's let loose, or you're going to miss out. And I, I, would, I would really struggle because my friend was good. When he let loose, he was just like a good let loose. I'm all busted and pit when you let me let loose. It's, oh, no, it's ugly. It's, and I was like, dude, like, I love me some Jesus, and I'm a pastor. If I let loose, I'm not missing out. I am creating shame on the name of Jesus. And so I had to, like, remove myself for a season from this friend, not because they weren't good, because they just wanted me to try to not miss out. And I go, listen, I, I, I did those things. I know what the result is in the end. I want things that lead to life. And see, the good news is, is that when the influences come, God gives us his presence to remind us every day, you can't be loved any more than you are, that you have a purpose, that God puts you, he made, the, you're the only one of you, right where you're at, God can use you. And it's okay, it's secure, that you have an inheritance that death and hell cannot touch. And it leaves us asking the question, is it our identity that drives our decision or the influences around us? Matter of fact, if I was going to put a little bow on today's message, uh, this, is, this is the bow that I put up on the next slide. This is, I'd say making our identity as Jesus followers. Notice how I didn't say the word Christian. Because Christian has this connotation. I'm born in America. I'm a Christian. My grandma went to church. So I'm a Christian. I sit in a building called the church, so I'm a Christian. Listen, sitting in an airplane hangar doesn't make you an airplane. Your identity as a Jesus follower. Followers, follow. So our identity as Jesus followers are the drive our decisions. And when our identity as a Jesus follower drives our decision, it protects us. Somebody say amen. That you're a son or a daughter of the Most High. When that identity drives your decision, it protects us from the crazy influences that will harm our lives. And it leaves us asking this question as we close this series out and I'm going to put it up on the screen and it's this does that influence match God who God wants you to become whatever that thing is that you're influenced to do is it helping you become more of who God actually designed you to be because you know this and I believe this is what God is telling all of us today that if that influence doesn't match the identity that God has for you then we don't let that influence influence us. Close with a true story. I was in high school. I, I, had, I was homeless. I got kicked out of a foster home. My adopted mom and dad went to a church a lot like this. They, they took me in, but they didn't, they didn't have a lot of money. There wasn't an extra car for me. And so my senior year in high school, I used to have to get a ride because no senior wants to ride the bus. Can, you, can I get an amen? And I was a senior in high school. I didn't want to ride the bus. So I had this friend, and Chris Salveson, if you ever see this, your act of kindness of giving me a ride to school, man, it, it was very gracious. But I used to have this friend, Chris Salveson. He'd give me a ride. Now, you have to understand something about Chris Salveson. Chris Salveson was a wrestler. He was bald. He was a punk rocker like me, right? And the reason I knew Chris, Chris and I were in the same English class. And this was like the breakfast club English class. This was the English class that they send all the kids that they want to graduate. You know, you just, you're going to pass no matter what so that you don't have to come back to school, right? Not that we weren't, in, uh, you know, unintentional. Intelligent, it's just we weren't good at it, right? So Chris and I were in this class with all these crazy, and Chris would give me And every morning, Chris would show up and go, man, do you think the world's going to end today? I go, I don't know, Chris. Chris was like, man, do you want to get high today, man? I'm like, Chris, man, like I'm a follower of Jesus, but man, the world's going to end. And Chris was always, you know, he was trying to influence me of going, listen, it doesn't matter. We don't count, so it doesn't matter what we do. And I would turn to him and I would say, no, no, you don't understand. There's a God who made you, a God who loves you, and a God who wants to be your friend. And when you start making your decisions based on that and not the other, life begins to change. I'm forever grateful for God's presence that reminds us that I'm adopted into the family, not because I'm good enough or I worked for it, but because of what Jesus did on the cross and that he can use busted and broken people to bring up there down here. And then no matter what happens in this lifetime, eternity, secure. My decisions aren't driven by what feels good. Decisions should be made on, am I becoming the child of God that we're meant to be? 
here's the reality. Crazy is unavoidable. Say amen. And the reality is, is how we deal with crazy will impact the quality of our life. And over this series, we've discovered that Jesus is supposed to be the anchor that filters our thought that Jesus is supposed to help manage our feelings so that they don't control us, that Jesus helps us weigh our opportunities, and Jesus helps us check our influences so that when crazy comes, it doesn't wreck our lives. You know, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life to the full. And so I have one simple challenge today. I bet there are many of you online or in the room, you may know a lot about Jesus, right? Maybe you even believe in Jesus. But I want you to understand there's a difference between knowing about Jesus and believing in Jesus and being surrendered to Jesus. And when we surrender to him, we find the life that we were meant for. That is my challenge. Have you surrendered all of who you are to the one who gave everything so that you could have life. Would you stand with me and let us pray? Hey, God, thank you that in the midst of crazy, you have given us your son. You broke heaven's bank. You gave us Jesus to be the anchor in the midst of all the crazy, the crazy on the outside and the crazy on the inside. But God, true love never forces Surrender must be an act that we do of our own. And I pray today, God, that we surrender to you, that we admit we got it wrong, that we believe who you say you are, and that we commit to being a follower. God, we ask that your presence, your Holy Spirit this week would remind us that we are your beloved children that every day that we wake up, that we have purpose and that our eternity is secure, that we'd become who you meant us to be. This is our prayer in Jesus' name and all who agreed said, amen.